Willis. He was epic. Oh my god, it's John Travolta right out of Gotti. Oh my god, Bruce Willis killed John Travolta. He owned Planet Hollywood or whatever the hell that was. I think it's a restaurant. I think I went there once. He was in a Terry Gilliam movie. He banged Demi Moore. He banged Terry Gilliam. He banged Brad Pitt. The dude has had a great life. And now, he's in reprisal. Keep working, old man. I'll take you anytime, punk. Bruce. Bruce, come on. Bruce, Bruce Willis has a sweet, sweet career. career. So Bruce Willis used to be amazing. He was in Die Hard. He was in Pulp Fiction. He was in The Sixth Sense. And it's just so much other stuff that's respected art. Some of the greatest films of all time. And now... You wanna tell me what's going on here? My son is in that car. I'll find your son. I'm trying to stay out of it. Safety deposit boxes where people keep their dirt. Jesus Christ, all these movies look the same. <laughs> yeah. Marauders, Precious Cargo, The Prince, The Assassin, Vice, Extract, Catch 44. Oh, what's going on up there? Have you ever wanted something that's beyond your reach? No, if we're exposed. It's a harm and having a little fun. That they just showed up. They just showed up with the script. Here's the script. They don't even give it to Bruce Willis, actually. They give it to Bruce Willis's agent because Bruce Willis doesn't care. And then his agent goes, okay, so we gotta find a way to shoot all of this in a day with him because he doesn't want to be in any movie more than a day. And listen, if Bruce Willis wants to be in generic action movies for the rest of his life, that's his business. But then there's a point and he kept setting the bar lower and lower and lower, and now we're at Reprisal, which is one of the most incompetent, stupid action movies. Number two, Reprisal, Reprisal is fucking terrible. terrible. The story makes no sense. The editing is horrible. The music is obnoxious. The sound mixing is so fucking bad, you'd swear I directed the movie. Like, relax with the music. Relax. These these movies are so overdramatic with- Like, like, why is the music in this scene at all? Used to build the shipping locks. It's right about here. How close is that to your bank? It's a couple miles. Inside of downtown. Let's circle that. Might be worth checking into. Okay, so for a movie like this to work, you need to have good action scenes, right? And the first big action scene of this film is the bank robbery. Yeah, that shot was cool when Neil Blomkamp did it, and now it's not cool anymore. Also, he doesn't order the bank tellers around, like, talking to them. He has a, a set of pre-prepared notes that he's going to hold out in front of them. He knew they were gonna hesitate, so he wrote another one that said, open the fucking safe. They would just bring in a handwriting analyst and they would find out who it was. Let's say he's really careful with those notes. Like he holds them up and then he immediately puts them, oh, he just threw it on the floor. And what's with these time codes for no reason? They put all these time codes here to let us know the date and time. Why is this important? So I guess Frank Grillo gets PTSD from the traumatic event of being at a, in a bank robbery. And so he just sits in the backyard and just waits for Bruce Willis to show up on set. Sure enough, he shows up a few hours later. Looking good. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Rough night? Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Yeah, uh, It's all on the news. Sorry, it happened. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. So most of this movie is them on their laptops, like, just investigating irrelevant facts about the case, like this lock. What kind of lock was it? It was big. It was all like an anti- it was like heavy steel lock. It was- they had to blowtorch it off the door. They spend 20 minutes on this lock. Describe it to me. The lock. It was big, it was old, it was steel, it was heavy. I don't know how he carried it. But you understand why they have scenes this long 
and why they have to spread these scenes out throughout the movie, it's to make it seem like Bruce Willis does more than he actually does in the movie. So they just fucking throw him in this room, and they probably just improvised, oh, go on Google and look up some locks. Oh, 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 oh. What the hell this, is this music? That's it. That's the lock, though. Shut, shut the music off. I'm gonna print that. And they kept it all in the movie, because why would they cut it out? Bruce Willis is, needs to be in the movie, and we need to pad out time. Special luck. Yeah, that's what they said. It was big. Rusty? So you get these 40 minute long scenes. Oh, lay it out for me. Rectangular, right? Right. Of Bruce Willis just fucking explaining nonsense to Frank Grillo, and, in, and like half of the time, they don't even look like they're in the same room. Then you get to a point when, you know, you take so many of them, she can't get out of bed without him. Bruce Willis is mumbling throughout the entire scene. It's been three days mm -hmm. since he hit that thing. Throughout the entire movie. She hadn't been under... She hadn't been under that long. Her mother crashed the car. When we were building that investigative wall in the, ba in the basement with him, him and Frank, it's one of my probably greatest scenes that I've had the opportunity as a director to work on because watching two great actors go head to head like that, they, it became a game of one-upsmanship. Oh, you're gonna go there? Well, I'm gonna go better. I'm gonna go better than you. I'm gonna go better than you. And it just got bigger and bigger throughout. So it's by far the, my best time working with Bruce. Break it down for me. Describe it to me. No, lay it out for me. Right? Give me all right, all right. Everybody doesn't have it, so it's special. Break it down for me. Yeah, see the doors? See exactly what it did? Break it down for me. Break it down for me. Break, Break it down, down for me. me. Break it down for me. You see images of this lock right here? I'm gonna pull it up right now, right now. But what they're saying, what had to have happened is... Mm-hmm. Break it down for me. Break it down for me. So when you look up locks on Google Images... And if you trace the locks, see, like this... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. I swear to God, this is the funniest part of the movie. I was right. There. Yeah, maybe 15 feet from the door. When you turn around, you didn't see a suspect at all? Mm-mm. No, he's gone. Where was he? Well, what they're saying, and what had to have happened, is he, he went out this way. <laughs> what? Describe it to me. It resembles a briefcase. Well, they're just following a pattern now. He wanted a briefcase full of money. The Little bank branch is right, right here. No, 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 wait, uh, wait, 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 it, listen to me, listen what? to me. Uh, what? You're right, you're right. I don't know if the people who worked on this movie were in... This is a very technically incompetent movie. There is way too much coverage. There is way too much cutting. He had some crazy stories. But he was a good guy. Why, why is this cut like this? He was a good guy. Why is he a good cut? cop? What? Mm. What was that? Scenes are dragged out for way too long. I assume it's because they didn't have enough footage to make a whole movie. A lot of these scenes feel really padded out, with a lot of repeated dialogue over and over about the lock. And it was heavy and it was very old. It was big, it was old, it was steel, it was heavy. I don't know how he carried it. It was big, it was all like an anti, it was like heavy steel lock. It was, they had to blowtorch it off the door. Very old. Steel. Very old. Yeah. For most of this movie, Bruce Willis isn't even facing the camera. It's insane Bruce Willis gets top billing in the cast. Cause he's barely in this movie, he barely does anything. Bruce Willis has a long time stunt double that he uses for this movie. But it's not even for anything that he can't do himself. It's for like scenes of him walking and just standing there. Like Bruce Willis couldn't be bothered to show up on set to do that. The lighting is so flat, the lens flares are horrendous. I don't understand what they were going for with those, but they don't look good. It looks really ugly. And then sometimes there are like these anamorphic lens flares and it it's totally doesn't match the other lens flares coming from in camera. Your job is boring. Am I right, audience? Am I right? Yeah, I'll see you at three. So I guess I should go over the plot of this movie just briefly so you guys know what it's about. So the bank robber from the beginning kidnaps his family, and he has to rescue them. There's a shootout, and his family's safe. Hey, you okay? Huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? She's back. She's back. 
And that's the plot. So they elongate this scene of them trying to figure out who the robber is even more by cutting to the robber at some warehouse where he's shooting targets. And so you go from really quiet Bruce Willis mumbling that you can barely make out with the volume turned all the way up to extremely loud gunshots. There's this action scene involving a bunch of police officers shooting at the robber. The robber is wearing a mask, so we can't see the guy's face, so we can't really connect with him all that much. Our hero, Frank Grillo, is literally nowhere to be seen. Then you have the finale of the film, this action scene, involving, of course, Bruce Willis' stunt double holding a shotgun. And while that's going on, Frank Grillo is trying to hunt down the guy who kidnapped his family. Put it down! Put it down! You kill me, your family dies. Put it down! Just put it down! It's just really bad acting. It's really a two-handed story where you're following the path of a man that has gone through a real tragedy and he's trying to set things right from what happened to him. But then the hunter, as he's tracking the man that caused all these issues with his family and murdering his friend at this bank, he becomes hunted. And that was what was so gripping about the story for me. Break it down for me. I think the editor was doing the best he could with the footage he had, but it's still not a good job. There's this part where he slows down the footage and digitally zooms in. Like, this is the movie doing this, not me. It's very subtle, and I think the editor was hoping you didn't notice, but, I mean, come on. <laughs> I notice. He had the precise measurements necessary for that mechanism to work on your doors. He knew the exact location of that locker. Let's take a second to admire the editing of this scene. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. There's a lot of scenes and shots in this movie that feel like they go on for a few seconds too long. You sure you don't want to give me a gun? and you can see the warp stabilizer they put on the shot. It's such a bad edit. If you just cut the shot earlier, it would have been fine. You ever want to talk? I'll be here for you. Thanks, James. I appreciate it. Sorry. Let us make fun of Bruce Willis some more. So Bruce Willis's character in the movie has a pill problem. Couple of night, takes the dreams away. I think they just wrote this into the movie because of Bruce Willis's awful acting. He seems like he's half asleep, so just make him a pill popper. You're caught in the jam, go in your exact location. Can I seriously just get Bruce Willis to show up for anything? As long as he gets paid and it's one day. Hold on, I'm gonna call his agent right now. Oh, hi, this is Bruce Willis's agent. Larry Cox. <laughs> Larry Cox Lock. Great, well, um, I'm wondering. I want Bruce Willis to be on my web show. It's a gigantic- Oh, internet show, internet show. What kind of internet but show is it? I think Bruce Willis could be great for this because uh, the, the role only requires him to show up for a day, and he gets paid money. Okay, well, that, that might be of interest to him. I'll run it by him. Thank you. It's only for a day, right? Okay.
the score and sound mixing. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, pal. It's like literally impossible to make out what anyone is saying. How close is that to your bank? It's a couple miles. This side of downtown. Let's circle that. It might be worth checking into. And the score is so insistent that this movie is intense. Because it's going. <laughs> Hi, Ferna. Tell me where she is. Tooth for a tooth. Tell me where she is! Stop! It's very hollow action movie stock music. In, In conclusion, conclusion, the international box office is $125,000. The estimated domestic video sales are 941000 It was a critical and financial flop. No one involved with this movie was actually concerned with entertaining anyone. That didn't even cross their minds when making this movie. There is not a single aspect of this production that is exceptional or even good. It's an embarrassing film. Everyone should be ashamed of it, including the whole fucking human race. And that's reprisal. But I'm not done with you quite yet because we actually have a special guest coming on. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Willis is coming on the show. He'll be here any minute. Five hours later. You know, I'm gonna call him, see where he is. Okay. Well, that's not gonna happen now. Improvise. Oh, fuck this That's right, we actually got Bruce Willis to come on the show. On the Ralph the Movie Maker show. But without further ado, here's Bruce Willis. I'll take you anytime, punk. That was great. Alright. That's alright, that's the show. Goodbye, everybody. Jesus, that was a disaster. You know, wherever Bruce Willis is right now, he's probably hung over, but wherever he is, I just hope he's happy. Take you anytime, punk.